guys, so we're gonna be building this garage here. We're gonna have 16 foot walls. Everything is gonna be stick framed on 16 inch centers, two by sixes. We're gonna be using trusses. And we're gonna be using regular OSB plywood. 7 16 on the walls, 5 8 on the roof. So I will get into explaining exactly why I chose all this in a little while. So my original plan was to build the entire wall at once. So on the long sides it'd be 60 feet, on the short sides it'd be 40 feet. I wanted to build the whole wall at once, sheath it all in, get it like it's 100% done except for the siding, and then stand it up. But the weather has become very unpredictable. We don't have a lot of good weather, so, so there's a few reasons why I changed that approach. And I went back to just standing up sections of the wall at once with no sheathing on it. Number one, we only have a very short window here of good weather, so tomorrow it's already supposed to rain. So what I don't want is to have a whole wall 60 feet long that's got sheathing on it and stand it up and then we can't come back for a week and do anything more because that's about what it's looking like right now. So I'm thinking that we're going to keep all the sheathing off for right now until all of the walls are built and finalized and then we'll put it all on at once. That way when we're done we can immediately get on the trusses and start to get this weathered in because right now if I stand up walls that's got sheathing on it they're gonna swell up from the rain. I don't know how the winds are gonna be right now it's a very calm day but this is not very common for this time of the year usually it's very windy in the spring because the leaves aren't on the tree to block the wind so we're really lucky and fortunate to get this day that we have right now but we're not gonna get very many more of those until we start to see leaves on the trees so that's another reason why I don't want to put the sheathing on right now because these 16 foot walls are a giant sail and I don't want things to get knocked over by the wind especially if we're just not even building at the time anyways because like in the next few days we're just going to be switching to something else because we don't have good weather so I don't want to just leave these walls sitting where they can get knocked over so we're going to build 16 foot sections at a time stand them up brace them down and just move on and get the whole thing done and then we'll sheath it in all at once. So right now we're crowning all of the 2 by 6s because these are 16 feet long so even the slightest crown on it could be an inch off on the wall and you don't want the crown going one way on one stud and then the next stud is crowned the opposite way that make for a really bad looking wall so we're trying to keep the best ones for the main king studs and then we'll use some of the bad ones for cripples and jacks and stuff. But also, if they're not too bad, we'll just crown them all the same way. So that's what we're doing right now. So I've been using the Pazload Framing Nailer for a while, and it's worked really well. But I just wanted another gun that was cordless, or hoseless, I guess you could say. So I got this. I don't know. I'm not a big Ryobi fan, but let's try it out and see if it works. I wanted a Makita, but they don't even have it out yet. It's like yeah. in the works right now, but so I didn't want to switch to a, like a Milwaukee platform when I really don't run Milwaukee, so I don't have their batteries. I, however, have a lot of Ryobi tools, so yeah. I brought all mine. And I also didn't want to switch to DeWalt because I don't have anything for them. That's nice. So I figured Ryobi been... kind of get my foot in the door with one of these airstrike guns. I don't know. We'll see. They're manufactured yeah. by the same company that makes Milwaukee, so it should be all right. Yeah. See, the biggest problem is over here, I'm 300 feet from my garage to run the air hose. So I have a big 240 volt air compressor over there. And we're also 300 feet from power supply, so running a compressor off of 300 feet of cord is not ideal either. So either way I do it, it's not really that great to run a pneumatic nailer, which I have a Pazlo pneumatic nailer, but also having the convenience of not having a hose is nice too. I know these guns are not gonna be near as fast as a pneumatic gun, but with two of them going, we should be all right. And I made sure that I got the 30 degree so that I could run the same nails as I'm running in the pads load. I've been using these pads load nailers for 15 years now. These things are really good. But you can only hold one clip in there, so. This you can do like one and a half, maybe? It no, like. it's, it's, well. Just one? Yeah, I guess you could do one and a half, but it's not Better really convenient. Just run one. 
So I'm running this without the HP battery. I heard the HP battery gives it a lot of problems. And then there's some other people that are saying that you have to run HP batteries. I don't see why though. You might just not get the full 750 nails, but I'm fine with 600 or whatever this will provide. So we'll try out the, the regular standard four amp hour batteries. So in this garage, we're gonna have minimal windows. I'm thinking we're only gonna put two on the 60 foot sides each, and then maybe two on the back. And I'm also gonna put another man door in the back. The man door for the front's gonna be right there. We're gonna have a 12 foot wide garage door there, and a 10 foot wide garage door there. And I'm also gonna have a lean to on that side, so I know that those windows are not gonna provide like a whole lot of light, but it's better than nothing. And the lean to roof is gonna come all the way up to almost the other roof, so I really can't put a window there either. And believe it or not, this slab has zero cracks in it still. One thing I did want to do with the windows is put them up quite a bit higher than normal because the further up you go, the more light you can get, first of all. And second of all, I don't really want it down to the level where if I'm away for a while, people can like peek in the windows. I'm never really a big fan of that. So I want them kind of out of reach unless you use a ladder to peek in them. Because if I'm gone for a few weeks or something, I don't want people to be like looking in here. So we'll probably set the bottom of the windows at around six feet or so. And normally when I'm standing up walls like this, the only thing I do really for the windows is I leave a space for them and I put the kings in there. And then once the wall is up, I put the jacks and the cripples and the header. That way you keep the wall as light as possible on the ground. And then once it's stood up, you can fill that stuff in easy. So let's go over the reasons I chose stick framed over other types of construction here. Originally, I did want a steel building and I started pricing them out and every time I talked to a steel building manufacturer or distributor, it just seemed like they were always trying to sell me something and I really didn't like that. Um, you would get a hold of somebody and you'd ask for a price and the next thing you know, they'd be calling you nonstop trying to get you to buy something from them. And, and I'm just not a fan of that whole type of deal. That's good. Okay. okay. I guess. That seems pretty good actually. So far, I'm pleasantly surprised. So the other reason why I didn't go with a steel building is because of the price. So a lot of these guys were starting out at about 50 grand just for the bare minimum. That's just for the structure and the siding and roofing. And that's not anything obviously with the site work or the concrete work or any kind of insulation or finish work or anything else it was just the frame and the siding and the roofing so then i started pricing out for a regular post frame construction or a pole barn as you might call it and i don't know if you guys have ever watched hard our buildings but i watch him a lot or at least i used to anyways and i love post frame construction the problem is in New York State, the snow load is so heavy here that you gotta have the columns four feet apart and you still have to have headers. So by the time you buy those laminated columns at 16 foot long, they got pressure treated on the bottom and KD on the top or SPF. And those columns are about $120 a piece. And for 200 feet of perimeter, you're looking at like 50 of those things. So just the columns alone were like six or $7,000 or somewhere in that range. I can't remember exactly, but I started pricing it out and I'm like, well, if I just stick frame this with two by sixes, a two by six I can get for $10. And those columns have three two by sixes in them. So really I'm paying $120 for a column that really only has $30 worth of material in it. And that got me thinking, well, let me just price the whole thing out with stick frame and just, just out of curiosity, let me see what it's going to be. And the framing for this whole building is only $3,000 for the walls. And then the trusses, you'd still have the same trusses whether you're going with a post frame or stick frame. So that doesn't even really matter. But just the walls alone, it's such a big difference. And I'm sure if you're in a different area with a lot lower snow load, it wouldn't be so bad. Like if you could put the posts eight feet apart, 
then that's really not so bad. The problem also is that you have to have headers as well. So even at four feet apart, you still have to have headers. So now you're looking at two by 12s going around the whole building, at least two of them going around 200 feet, maybe even three of them. So, and some people use LVLs, but on a four foot span, a two by 12 would be fine. So now, in addition to the six or seven thousand dollars that you have for the columns, now you have to also put the headers up. To me, that's just getting into a lot of unnecessary money. So while I do love post frame construction, I just don't believe that it's a viable option for this area. The other part about post frame construction that you have to think about is the fact that if you have the posts four feet apart, now you're putting the weight on the slab four feet apart instead of spreading it out. So now you have a much higher point load on each four foot section, which probably isn't a big deal, but it's just another thing to think about. If you have the post eight feet apart, then you're really putting a lot of stress every eight feet instead of every 16 inches like I have here. So after doing months of research and thinking about it, I just came to the conclusion that steel frame was just too expensive and I didn't like the operation that they have going on with the salesman and then post frame was just too expensive and I do like the operation with post frame but at the same time it's just not cost effective to do that here so that led me to stick framing which really was my last option when I first started designing this if I could have designed this building myself and then welded all the steel together and do a weld up construction then I would have done that because that would have been cheap enough where I could handle that and it probably would have been about the same money as stick frame but in my area anything over 1400 square feet and you need engineered plans and there's not many engineers that are going to sign off on a weld up project like that um, they get away with it out in Texas all the time but that's not something you can really do in New York here you got to have joints that are bolted together and when you get involved in that you just get involved in a lot of different stuff so at that point you're better off just finding a prefabricated building that you can put together yourself and another thing I'm using regular OSB and I'll get into more of the reasons why later but I just want to tell you guys right off the bat I'm not really a fan of OSB especially just regular OSB zipboard is quite a bit better regular OSB was a lot cheaper and I I actually saved about $3,000 from using regular OSB over Zipboard. So I'll get into more detail about that later. But for right now, just know that I didn't even need any sheathing on this project, but the engineer sort of insisted on it. So I'll tell you more about that later.
clip, we just didn't put it on you. Man.
do anything. We need to put. So basically, what we're doing is taking the sill seal and stapling it to the bottom of the bottom plate for the first section of walls on each wall. And then after that, we just sort of leave it long. And then as we're putting the wall on, we'll straighten it out. It's easy to straighten that out afterwards, especially if you have a bar to lift it up like that, or if you just lift up with a telehandler. What we're doing up there with that two by four is lining up all of the studs so that they're on center. Because with a long stud like this, they could be all over the place. And in order for that brace to have any strength, you want to nail it to each stud but you can't do that until these are straightened out so basically what we do is we start off with just a couple nails in the bottom a couple nails in the top of that diagonal right there and don't nail anything else and then we'll straighten it out with that by running our 16s from the corner mark it on that two by four and then just put every one of those in place that way they're nice and straight and then you can go and put all your nails in the diagonal and now you have a nice sturdy wall without plywood on it. And as we're going along, we're putting a top plate on. So we started with a four foot section and then we just run 16 foot from there. So they stagger four feet. So the same thing there, we started out with a four foot section that overlaps the other plate. And then when we put the next wall up, we'll put a 16 footer from there, four feet into that section. So for right now, so for right now, because we don't have sheathing on the walls to blow in the wind, we're getting away with a brace every 16 feet at a 45 degree diagonal. But if we had plywood on the walls, especially with these tall of walls, you would want them about every eight feet. So before we put plywood on these walls, I'm gonna put one in the middle of each one of these. And I'm gonna also make them taller so they go right up to the top plate. So we'll have lots of extra strength here. This is adequate for what we got right here because if the wind blows on it, it's nothing for it to catch. But when we get all done, and before we put our OSB on there, we'll put bracing in between each one of these braces. And one thing, I don't know if you guys caught onto this yet, but we have to cut every one of these studs because they're 16 foot, but they come a little bit longer than 16 foot first of all second of all the edges are not squared up and third of all we don't want a 16 foot stud because then you have an inch and a half for the bottom plate and three inches for the top plate so it would be four and a half inches long even if they were exactly 16 foot which is fine except for the fact that when you go to put sheathing on that goes every four feet so then when you get to the top, you got a little four and a half inch strip that you got to put on and that's just kind of annoying and I don't need that extra four and a half inches. So the way it is right now, we can just run four stacks of sheathing and it's right to the top and there's no ripping any sheets and that's just a lot more streamlined because it's not that important to have that extra four and a half inches.
right there. Okay, good. Go that way with it. Right next to that one.
So at this point we have our braces in between the other braces. They're at a more extreme angle, but they'll still do the trick. So we ran a string line from point A to point B, and we set that wall up top so it's exactly where we need it to be. And what I want to do now is stiffen up these braces because these are 16 feet long. This is a two by four. And depending on, even if the wind blows, this can make the wall go in and out a little bit. So I want to make this a T by adding another two by four going the other way on top here. And then that way it can't do this. So I just got 12 foot 2x4s because you don't need to go all the way to the end. The flex is going to be in the middle. So we got everything all braced up. We got a T on each one of these. We ran a string line down every wall and straightened it up so everything is within a sixteenth of where it should be. Uh, it's probably over braced, but to me there's no such thing. So now what we're going to work on is getting all of our jacks, our cripples, and our headers in each one of these openings. So I decided that the bottom of the window is going to be at six foot. So this is our first jack and all of them are going to be at the same height. So I know that's a very tall sitting window, but that's what I want um, for many different reasons. But number one, privacy. Number two. If I decide I want to put some wall air conditioners in there, they're much more effective to be taller up. And the light coming in is more effective if they're taller up as well. So a few different reasons why I wanted to do that. And also you have more wall space underneath of it. That's useful. So since this isn't a house, I'm not worried about like cosmetics. You could argue that a window would be better to go down to the floor, but this is not a house. I want it to be more useful than anything functionality over cosmetics.
five of those. You need two more? Well, I need two more, but they're going to be at a different measurement. Uh, same width, but different measurements. Different, uh, like, so the door needs 38 and a half, so we need to add three, so that's 41 and a half.
All right, so all the windows and doors are framed in. You can see we got them pretty high up. That's exactly what I wanted. This one down here, we had to leave it down lower because this is gonna be a room here, so we're gonna have floor joists right above that, so I couldn't keep that window up high like the other ones. And this will be the back door to get into this room over here, which will be like a nuts and bolts room. I guess in general it'll be like hardware and possibly some tools, but probably just hardware. And just one window in the back here. I know a lot of you probably think I'm crazy for just being so minimal on the windows, but it's really what I want. It's a garage, it's not a house. So we're just getting things cleaned up and we're gonna start sheathing this side. So 10 by 10 garage door, 12 by 14 garage door. So 12 feet wide, 14 tall. I wanted to go 14 wide with this, but the engineer would not let me budge on that. Either I could have an eight foot door here and a 14 foot door there, or a 10 foot door here and 12 foot door here. I could only have 22 feet of doors. He would not let me budge on that said because this is a sheer wall there's just not enough wall to keep this gable end from racking so as it is we already need to do some crazy stuff with some um, special brackets that you put on the bottom and then we need to actually use three quarter inch uh, tap cons going in the bottom and so this whole wall is like specially built because there's not enough for it to be a sheer wall which is kind of crazy because I've seen garages like this that were built with almost no wall on this side so I don't know I don't know what's so different about this garage, but unfortunately it wasn't my decision. Um, I probably could have got real crazy with the sheer wall and there's special brackets that you can put on the corners to make this work and I could have probably got another two feet, but I think 12 feet wide is gonna be plenty. If anything's wider than 12 feet going in here, then it's just probably doesn't belong in here. And then for this side, this will be more like for cars and pickup trucks and SUVs and stuff. We'll have the lift in there. And then that side will have like a portable lift for bigger vehicles, bigger machines. We'll have the whole lane open. That side, only half of it's open because there's going to be a room over there. And then there's also going to be a second floor. So let me explain how we're going to move forward with the sheathing. Um, originally, I wanted to do zip board. So 7 16 zip on the walls and then 5 8 on the roof. But the price of zip is just so crazy right now. Um, by doing it with OSB, I saved about $3,000. And you may say on this big of a building, that might not seem like a lot of savings. But, but that amount of savings allows me to put some insulation on the exterior of this whole building and still be less money than it would have cost for zip. So zip really does nothing more than seal up for air sealing. And then it also has a house wrap built in, but you still have to tape all the joints and that does take quite a while. And so what I decided on doing instead was to put three eighths fan fold on the wall. So I'm gonna take some of the savings that I made from not using zip board and I'm gonna use it for exterior sheathing. And that does a lot more than the zip board because the zip board has zero R value. So instead of house wrap, I'm gonna upgrade to fan fold insulation and then we'll have a little bit of a thermal break. Not a whole lot, but it's enough. It's enough to be something. So I'd much rather do that. It'll be a little bit more work, but at the same time, I'm getting more value when I'm done. And as far as structurally, I don't even need this on here. I could have just done some bracing on the walls and then basically the metal siding on this would have bin the sheathing it would it would hold everything from racking so i really don't even need sheathing but the engineer kind of insisted that i had it i was just going to do purlins on here and girts but he wanted me to do sheathing he wasn't saying like absolutely no but he was really leaning towards saying that so i was i just you know what i'll just go with it sheathing is not that much money 
And I do like the idea that it seals everything up pretty good, like from mice and bugs and stuff. I know you can seal it up pretty good with just the metal, but it's just an extra layer. So as we're putting the sheathing on, I'm gonna run a tape from one end to the other, and we're gonna nail every stud on the sheathing at exactly the 16 inch center. Cause they're really bowed. Whenever you have long studs like this, 16 foot, they're just gonna be really bowed. That's just sort of the nature of the beast. And so as we're going along, every time we nail the top of each piece of sheathing, we're gonna set it at the right spot with the tape. We're just gonna run a hundred foot tape down here. And just every time we nail one, it's gonna be right on the money. And then that way, when we put up the next four feet of sheathing, we'll do the same thing with the top of that. So it'll be four, eight, 12, and then the top we don't have to set. So that'll keep all the studs super straight.
and cut. These. I'm shutting it off. I don't care what you say. Ready? Ready, break. Tell me when you cut. Kind of almost need to put a four foot sheet right there. Guess we don't have any of them. We'll just have to work our way across. Is, uh, I guess we got a sheet right there, right? Hold on, I gotta reload first. Suck is this? Most of the sheets can be wasted. Yep. But we're gonna need a piece for up there, so maybe it'll be perfect. Perhaps. <laughs> will it will it rest on that side? If that's where you gotta be, then it kinda does. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean I need to go your way about an eighth of an inch, but yeah, I can do that. Good. Okay. Well, I mean, we could actually just go, we could put the sheet on top of this and just leave the four feet for after. We'll do that the last thing. Huh. Does that actually, oh, that actually does land on that stud, huh? That's cool. I don't know how, but it does. Well, that's the way it's supposed to. Maybe it's not too bad having it just swivel like that, free balling. Maybe it's 
that cool? Yeah, maybe not. Whoa! <laughs> I guess it's whoever pushes harder gets. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I believe so. Worth it. No. Oh. What? It fits. Don't fit. because we got the thing closed. When you open it up, you'll see. Whoa! Why don't you just leave this thing running? I'm gonna do that now. You gotta tighten that belt. Ah! Well, let's put this up here.
so I didn't exactly pick the best day to do this, but I want to put some house wrap on this. I'm not a huge fan of house wrap. There's much better ways to seal this building up. But in this case, I wanted to use some exterior insulation, some, some rigid insulation. And to use that, you need a weather barrier. Even though the rigid insulation is going to be sealed up with tape in between the joints, and that acts as a weather barrier to code that's technically not enough. So a lot of times on a remodel, I'll use some fan fold insulation and they make some fan folds that have perforations so it counts as a weather barrier. But, but I was reading online and technically they actually don't meet the specifications for the building codes. So, so on a new construction project like this, using fan fold I just don't want to get involved in anything where I have to tear it off and put a weather barrier on. So I got some cheap house wrap and the idea is I'm going to put it on for now and it's going to protect the building for a little while and, and then I'll put some rigid insulation on it later on and then I'm going to put my metal siding on. So I'm not sure if I'm going to put fan fold over that or if I'll do like a one inch rigid insulation. But either way, putting the house wrap on means that I'm meeting code and then after that I can kind of do what I want. I'm a big fan of exterior insulation because you're insulating the studs. That way your studs don't have any thermal transfer. And even 3 8 fan fold would do quite a bit for that. But I'm still not determined whether I want to do that or like a 1 inch insulation. We'll see how the pricing goes. But either way, just putting this house wrap on here will kind of keep this protected for a little while. So I just want to say I am not a fan at all. This is like some of the worst work I've ever done with this house wrap. It's been a long time since I used house wrap. Mostly what I use is zip board. Mostly what I use is zip board or I apply a liquid house wrap. 
I'm a big fan of anything to do with waterproofing being liquid. Not a fan at all of this. But like I said, this is just a meat code. It's one of those things where it's kind of redundant because the foam I put on on top of this will do the job better than this will. But the code is kind of stuck in its ways. So, But for $300 and a few hours of time, we'll meet code and then we can do what we want. So not much else to say about this. It's pretty basic. Um, two by six construction, 16 foot walls, 40 by 60. Trusses are ready to get set. Right now it's the end of the week. It's Friday night and next week looks pretty good on the weather radar. So we should be able to set those trusses. No problem. Should be able to have those all done next week. The roof will be sheathed in. And then we'll have a weatherproof structure minus the windows and doors so at that point i can actually start working on a few things inside of here because i have a few projects that i really need to get in here as soon as possible the telehandler is the number one thing because it's hard to use that the fumes coming from it are so bad so we don't like to run it too much unless we have to because it's definitely really low on compression so as soon as i get the roof on this i'm probably going to pull that telehandler right in here and rebuild that engine I think that's it for this video guys and I'll see you on the next one.